When it comes to graphics, there are a lot of opinions. And I think that's mostly because of how vague the term graphics really is. I remember a while back watching a video from Extra Credits talking about the difference between graphics and aesthetics. Where graphics define the visual fidelity of a game, or in other words, the amount of detail, and aesthetics is the actual visual style of a game. Now I will argue any day that aesthetics is hugely more important than graphics, and I think there are countless examples of games that manage to look beautiful with very similar graphics. However, it's definitely useful to know what rendering techniques or graphics help define a certain look. Unreal Engine is an example of an engine that for a long time has been praised for its amazing graphics, something that Unity has often been critiqued on. But Unity has undergone a lot of changes recently in terms of rendering capability, and a lot of the stuff that makes Unreal look like Unreal is now available inside of the Unity editor. So here's a short guide on how you can configure Unity to give more of that realistic Unreal look. We'll be taking this graphically simple scene and turning it into this. So let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do is go to Edit, project settings and player and here under the desktop version we want to go to other settings and this option is fairly hidden but we can actually change the color space from gamma to linear now this is probably the one option that has the biggest impact on the visual look of your game the color space determines the math used by Unity when mixing colors in lighting calculations or reading values from textures. A big advantage of using linear color space is that the colors supplied to shaders will brighten linearly as light intensity increases. With the alternative gamma color space, brightness will often begin to turn to white as the values go up. This often leads to a very washed out look. Next up we can go window lighting and then settings and in here I want to make sure that we have a skybox selected if we have an outdoor scene and if we do we can go under environment lighting and change our source to skybox now this is going to add in some ambient light based on our skybox you can see it helps everything feel more part of the scene now this scene is completely rendered in real time however a lot of the detailed lighting you see in AAA games is actually baked into the scene i won't go into light map baking in this video but i'll have a link in the description if you want to learn more next we can go and adjust our our quality settings. To do that we go edit, project settings, quality. We want to set this to ultra. We can leave the pixel light count at 15. Make sure to select full res and forced on for the textures. And we actually want to get rid of the anti-aliasing. That's because we'll apply this later as a post-processing effect. We can make sure to check all of these checkboxes. Under shadows we'll select very high resolution. And I'm actually going to increase the shadow distance quite a bit. Now this is very far for shadow distance, but I think it works well for this scene. We then go select our camera. Here we want to change the rendering path to deferred. In forward rendering each object is rendered in a pass for each light that affects it. Therefore each object might be rendered multiple times depending on how many lights are within range. With deferred rendering however the render cost of lighting is proportional to the number of pixels the light illuminates instead of the number of lights themselves. As a result you're no longer bound by the amount of lights that you wish to render on screen. However deferred rendering actually has a much bigger upfront performance cost so what solution is best for you completely depends on your game. In general, if you're building a desktop application and plan to have lots of light in your scene, go with deferred. If you're building for mobile or VR and plan to have fewer lights in your scene, go with forward. I'll have a link in the description to where you can learn more. We then enable allow HDR and disable MSAA. Dynamic range defines how very bright or dark colors are captured by cameras in your scene. HDR stands for high dynamic range and can be used to capture colors with much greater precision than the standard LDR or low dynamic range. This means that we don't lose detail in over or under exposed areas. But we still have to define how all of this color data maps to the much lower range on our display. This is done with a post processing effect called tone mapping. So you can see the visual appearance of our scene has already changed quite a bit. But the very big difference between a default scene in Unreal and one in Unity is post processing. Because by default Unreal applies a lot of post processing effects. To get these in Unity we go Window, Asset Store, here we'll search for the post processing stack. This is a series of post processing effects made by Unity themselves. Let's hit download and import. I'll of course have a link for this in the description. Let's hit import again. You should now see a post processing folder appear in your project panel. We then select our main camera, hit add component and search for post processing and here we'll select the post processing behavior. This takes in a profile. To create a profile we'll right click in the project, go create, post processing profile and we'll just call this CC for color correction. We then select our main camera and drag that in. Now if we select our CC profile you can see all of the different effects that we now have available to us. The first one we want to enable is color grading. Under here we have the possibility of adjusting our tone mapper. 
Tone mapping is where we decide how our HDR color data will be displayed on screen. In Unity we can either configure this ourselves or use a preset provided to us called Filmic. This uses the ACES Filmic tone mapping curve which is also the default tone mapping curve in Unreal Engine 4. If you want to learn more about the math behind this curve I will have a link in the description. And by default we can choose from two profiles, neutral where we can adjust everything ourselves or filmic and you can see right away our scene just pops so much more. Next we can enable eye adaptation. While playing this will mimic the effect of your eye adjusting to a certain brightness level by automatically changing the exposure of the camera based on the brightness of the scene. After enabling the tone mapper and eye adaptation you often have to go in and adjust some of your brightness levels. I'm gonna go to lighting and bump up the ambient light to 2 as well as select my directional light and change the intensity from 4 to 7. Let's then go back to our post processing and the rest of the effects are fairly small changes. We of course want to add in some motion blur. You can control how much motion blur you want using this slider. The bigger the number the more the motion blur. Unreal also includes a vignette by default. Let's enable this and maybe bump down the intensity a bit. If you don't have the possibility of baking your lighting you'll often also see ambient occlusion applied as a post processing effect. Let's enable it and you can see the shattering that now gets applied to objects that are close to each other. We can of course adjust stuff like the radius and the intensity. We can also add in a bit of bloom. Now I want this effect to be very subtle. I'll bump down the radius a bit and the intensity as well. Finally we can get rid of these ragged edges by applying anti-aliasing. By default this is going to use a fairly light technique called fast approximate anti-aliasing. Let's just scale up our game view here and hit play so you can see how that looks. Now this definitely gets rid of the ragged edges but you will see a lot of flickering on the screen. This is something that I often see people complaining about in Unity. But now with the new post processing stack we have the possibility to fix this the same way that Unreal does by using another method called temporal anti-aliasing. You can see this gets rid of almost all of the jitter and makes the movement of the camera feel so much more smooth. And one thing that I also want to do real quick is go to color grading and bump up the post exposure a bit. That definitely looks a lot better. If you want to learn more about post processing I have a dedicated video on the subject. Now that's about all the quick to apply graphic settings I can think of. There are of course a million other things that you can do to amp up the graphical quality of your game. Some that come to mind are using reflection probes for real time reflections and emission maps combined with bloom to get nice glowing surfaces. Also most people primarily use the standard shader that comes with Unity. Now this is a really good shader because it allows you to very easily get PBR materials in your game but it does have a few limitations when it comes to high end rendering. If you want stuff like refraction, translucency and dynamic weather things get a lot more tricky. Luckily there's a great plugin available on the Unity Asset Store called the Uber Shader. It works in much the same way as the standard shader but on steroids. Now this asset is not free but I do recommend it for anyone who's going for a super realistic look. That's pretty much it for this video. Remember that you can make super beautiful game with even the simplest of technology as long as you remember to have fun and get creative. Also remember to subscribe for more tutorial content and other than that thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all the awesome patrons supporters who donated in August and a special thanks to Hans Hoftun, Jesper Mikkelsen, Thomas Worley, Stone Gamer, Cyborg Mummy, Jason Latito, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, Husam Kaza, Judaman, Aaron, Robert Bund and Peter Locke. If your name's not on the list I will make sure to include it in videos later this month and the next month as well. You guys rock!